Y'all, I've been excited to talk to you about my experience with the iPhone 13 Pro lineup. And in particular, the iPhone 13 Pro Max and iPhone 13 Pro. Now these two devices are pretty much identical, outside of their obvious difference being, you know, the size of the phone and the battery life. But other than that, you can enjoy the same features on one as the other, which is refreshing. But at the same time, it kind of creates a little dilemma because now it's like, which do you choose and why? So one of the first things I want to talk about is the design. Like what is the experience that you get in hand? Now the iPhone 13 Pro has a 5.7 inch screen, which is much smaller than the 6.3 inch screen offered on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Which brings me to something that I loved about both of these. So when it comes to the iPhone 13 Pro, I really like how this feels in hand. Like I can comfortably use this with one hand. And I don't feel like I'm gonna accidentally drop it as much as I do with the Max, especially when I am adjusting this in one hand and you know trying to do that little thumb reach to get to the top of the screen and you gotta shift the phone. The Pro Max is a much different experience in doing that than with the 13 Pro. On top of that, the 13 Pro is more pocketable, especially for my ladies out there, you know we don't have the big pockets. And the layout of the buttons on these is actually the same as it was on the iPhone 12. Which brings me to another point, if you used or held an iPhone 12, this is pretty much gonna be a very similar experience, with the exception being the 13 models are a little bit heavier and thicker. Volume on the right, charging port on the bottom, still lightning. I know, I'm gonna bring it up for every video, not every video. But yes, you can tell I'm a little salty about that. <laughs> you have speakers along the bottom as well, a SIM card tray on the left side, a mute switch, and your micro SD card slot. And the colors, we have new colors now. We have this beautiful Sierra blue, which is different than what we saw last year. So this one is a lighter tone. It's a very unique color, and it's one that I'm happy to see from Apple because I know I said I wanted to see new colors, but I really didn't have in mind what that would look like. So yeah. I'm pleased with this one. <laughs> Before we go any further, I wanna take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, CapCut. So basically, CapCut is a free video editing app for iOS and Android. And the interesting thing is it's made by ByteDance, which are the same developers as TikTok. So you should already know, we're about to have a nice suite of editing tools. And in using them, there's a lot of different things within the app that I discovered I like. Now for one, there's no ads or watermarks, so you can make your video projects without any stamps and all that on them. But the cool thing here is that it's simple to use. You basically add in your video, you have your options here at the bottom of things that you can do so you can trim it you can add your own audio or voiceover but a cool feature in here that i really like is under the text option because when you tap on that not only can you add text but it can also auto caption your video and you can take it a step further because you can change the look of the text that is auto captioned and delete it as necessary. I mean, God, you can just do so much in here. You can even add in green screen footage and remove the background. You can even go in and change the format so that it automatically adjusts the size to accommodate, you know, whatever social media platform you might want to post it on. And you know that little 3D zoom thing that people like to do with photos? Uh-huh, you can do that too in here. I mean, I'm just touching the surface of the things that you can do, but I definitely think it's worth a download because a lot of those things that I just mentioned are free there are some paid aspects of the app but it's definitely one of those free apps that you can actually enjoy without having to pay so yeah I'm gonna have this link down below for you so that you can check it out on your own but yeah let's get back to the video <laughs> the one thing though that I'm like I have mixed feelings on are the stainless steel sides on this like yeah I have to hit you like the makeup tutorials so you can see the stainless steel sides there once the focus on my face but anyway it, you know I, I don't I don't know I have mixed feelings about them because I feel like it does add you know to the premium look of this but the fingerprints and the process take away from it because as soon as you touch this my gosh it gets loaded and it's like a minor pet peeve but for those of you out there that you know like to rock your phone without a case you see this beautiful back and then you get to the sides and it's like just not the same effect you can't appreciate its beauty when it's smudged up you know what I mean now the display both of these do get a bit brighter than the 12s as Apple claimed, thankfully, you know? And ProMotion, it's a nice experience up here. I'm so glad to now finally have it on my iPhone and not just on my iPad. So that has been nice. And it's honestly, I feel like something that you're gonna notice. Like everything just looks super smooth and buttery, especially when you're playing certain games, yeah. You, you can see the difference. And another thing that changed for the displays on the entire 13 lineup is the size of the notch. It's smaller, 20% smaller to be exact. Now, what does this look like for you? For me, <laughs> it was a 
it was okay. You know, like, yes, I saw that it was smaller, but not so much smaller that I would forget the notches there. So smaller, yeah. But it's not one of the things that I feel that you notice as quickly because it doesn't drastically change your viewing experience. Now, y'all, this is, I'm gonna I'm go ahead and tell you, we about to <laughs> probably have a little lengthy conversation about this next subject, which is the camera, because this is where I think the most drastic change was applied down to just how it looks in general. Like the camera bump is so much larger this year, like significantly. And you know, you already had the little table rock going on, but it's it's on a whole nother level now. Like, geez, it's, but with the larger lenses comes a great experience. So something that I really admired this year with Apple is that they actually, I, I wanna say upgraded every single camera on every single iPhone 13. Hats off. So example, we now have sensor shift optical image stabilization on the entire 13 lineup, not just the Max, which was the case for the iPhone 12s. So what does that mean for you? Basically steady your videos and better photos, which is gonna be a huge help, especially for those moments when you're grabbing a photo or grabbing a video while you're walking or riding in a car or just any moment where your hands aren't gonna be as steady as you need them to be. Now on top of that, they also improved the telephoto lens because you now have a three times zoom instead of two. And you can now go up to a 15 times zoom versus the 10 times zoom. And I'm happy to say images look great, you know, in this mode, because sometimes the quality just ain't there. <laughs> and the ultra wide lens, it now has autofocus. But what do these metrics translate to in real world use? Let's see. Now, something that just blew my mind is cinematic mode. This is by far one of my favorite features on the iPhone 13s, especially seeing that sometimes I use my phones to shoot content on the go. So to now have an option like this is something that I did miss on my iPhone 12. Looks good, right? I know, I said the same thing. I, like, I know I will always tell people who would talk to me about starting a YouTube channel and not having the equipment. I would tell them, you know, use your phone. And I think sometimes they would be reluctant to do so because they wanted the quality to be even better and they wanted that blurred background. Now with the regular camera, don't get me wrong, you still have great quality footage, but sometimes getting that blurred background was more of a challenge. But now it's so much easier, like you don't even have to fully understand how to create that blurred background because now you can just swipe to the mode and it gives it to you naturally. And the cool thing here is that you can even adjust the focus after the fact. Now when it comes to tracking, you can have your subject be a person, pet, or even an object. All you have to do is single tap for it to focus or double tap for it to track it. And it does a fairly good job at this. Like I can see this being great in like a lot of different scenarios, like concerts, or for parents out there when you're filming your child at a recital or you know an event, you can just tap them on screen and blur out all the other kids. You know, you don't have to crop them out anymore. And when it came to photos, I like what I saw. Images are more vibrant, saturated, with more detailed, dynamic range and contrast. We also now have macro photography, which I like up here, especially because you don't have to go to a certain, you know, mode at the bottom of your screen. Instead, what happens is it shifts to macro mode on its own automatically when you're a certain distance from your subject. So look at how close I can get to this freaking tree. Oh my gosh. So it's real subtle. You can practically lay the phone on it. So macro mode is enabled using the ultra wide lens. Now you can tap on your wide lens or your telephoto lens and grab a macro shot, but note in the background is using the ultra wide lens. Now the photography styles, I've been loving that. So the thing to note about photography styles is that it's different than a filter for your photo. Because photography styles works to preserve the skin tone, whereas a filter does not. But something to note is that photography styles is an option that you must select before taking the photo and you cannot edit or change after you get the photo. It will basically be like the default look for all of your pictures, unlike a filter in which you can change after the fact. All right, now the battery life, y'all. 
both of these are good. Like you cannot go wrong with either. Like I've been good with the iPhone 13 Pro here. It, you know, for the most part gets me through the day, but this 13 Pro Max gets me through the year. <laughs> you know, I'm playing there, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating. What I'm basically saying is the 13 Pro Max will definitely, definitely get you through the day and possibly then some. Now, my final thoughts, which which of the two phones am I going to, you know, make my daily driver? Would I recommend either to you? Yes, I would recommend both of these phones to you. It's really a matter of preference at the end of the day. Like, I do like the fact that this one's easier to manage in hand, easier to manage in my pocket, just easier to manage, period. But I love the battery life on this one, the Pro Max. And I love that Apple has finally bumped up the storage space of the base model lineup, making it a more sensible purchase. Now, I used to be the type of person that just instantly jumped to the Max. Like, I didn't care what the other phones are doing, I want the Max. But that 13 Pro, it is now so similar to the iPhone 13 Pro Max that you're kind of just now picking which of the two feels better in hand and which battery could you get away with? So with all of that considered, I chose a 13 Pro. <laughs> I don't know, for me, it was just how much more manageable this is in hand, while also still having a great display size and a great battery. Now the base model for the 13 Pro starts at 999, and goes as high as 1500 for the one terabyte variant. And the base price for the 13 Pro Max is 1099, with the one terabyte variant being about 1600. But that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down below in that comment section, did you upgrade your phone this year? And if you did, which phone did you upgrade to? But as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.